I'm gonna go silent. All right, hello everyone. My name is Madeline Stockman. I'm the director at large for vocation support for the Military Council of Catholic Women. And today with me here, I to talk about the secular order of this house of Carmelite. I have Barbara Bascal and Aishu Demiyuga. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Before we get into uh, learning all about the Discount Carmelites and hearing uh, Aishu Demiyuga's uh, process of discernment, I just want to open us up in uh, prayer through the intercession of our Blessed Mother. So we'll just open up with a Hail Mary. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Hail Mary, full of grace, the yes. Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst um, women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Holy Mother of God, pray for us now, now, now and at the hour of our death. death. Amen. Amen. And um, the the, pa the patroness for MCCW is Our Lady of Good Counsel. So Our Lady of Good Counsel, pray for us. Pray for us. In the name of the Father, mm -hmm. and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. All right. So um, Aishu, I've known you for a long time. We went through RCIA together. We met in Texas, and I came from uh, kind of a nothing-ish background, and um, you had come over um, here from India. So tell us a little bit about who you are and uh, about uh, just briefly your your story to how you came to Catholicism. Um, I'm, I'm originally from India, and um, I came to the United States in the year 2004 to get my, my PhD in biochemistry. Um, and uh, I was not raised Catholic. None of my family is Catholic. And I actually, um, I didn't even know anything about the Catholic faith. I had a very little understanding of it. But um, I was introduced to the faith by my husband. Um, we actually met in graduate school and my life changed for the better because of that. And uh, uh, we met in Galveston. Uh, we were both majoring in uh, biochemistry. And um, my husband was a reservist and had just got back from deployment. And so we actually moved to Fort Hood, Texas. Um, he, he, his plans of pursuing a graduate degree did not really come through. So, and I had just graduated. So we decided to just, you know, follow God's will in the situation. And we moved to Fort Hood and he wanted to serve his country by being in the, in the army. So I wanted to support him in that process. So we we got married in the Catholic Church, and actually we had three weddings. <laughs> uh, but like I wasn't I wasn't Catholic then when we got married. So we we had three different weddings, and and then I had entered the Catholic Church right after I had Raphael, my firstborn. Um, and it was during that time that I had a very I experienced a deep conversion to the faith. Um, I almost had a very traumatic labor, and I almost lose lost my son. And to the intercession of Holy Mother of God, Mother Mary, um, Raphael actually was blessed with it and given life. And uh, it was it was just a wonderful experience. And um, and, uh, the, and and so I'm a, I'm a military spouse and with I'm a homeschooling mother and I am in the secular order of discalced Carmelites. And I will talk about it when you ask more questions on that. Um. I remember when Rafi was little and when he was just a babe in your arms and I've heard you, um, you know, I, I remember when, when he was born and when you had that experience. Um, Barb, do you just want to introduce yourself briefly a little bit about um, who you are and, and why, are you, why you're here for those who are watching? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm Barbara Baskin from Oklahoma City. And um, I am uh, also a member of the Secular Order of Discount Carmelites, and I am on the Provincial Council, uh, which is um, a council that is uh, part of the Oklahoma Semi-Province, uh, and part of the order um, for our province. So we're a council that is over the province uh, for the secular, and, and we work under the Provincial Father. Right, and I'm glad um, to be here, and I'm here just to, uh, just, uh, just you know, strengthen numbers, right? <laughs> always, yeah. always. Um, <clears throat> so Aishu, 
after you know you converted to the Catholic faith and you're kind of living this this strong Catholic lifestyle, um, you know that's kind of where our our paths split when I mm-hmm. you know had moved away from the Fort Hood Texas area. So, how did you find the the discount um, Carmelites in your area? What drew you to that? What brought you to them? Oh, it was completely the intercession of Therese of Lisieux, um, also known as Therese of the Child Jesus, Saint Therese. Um, I actually um, I picked her as my confirmation saint, um, and I was really deeply attracted to her life, and um, I um, I found myself very in a similar path as her. Um, I lost my father at a young age, and I went through a lot of childhood trauma, and uh, um, I actually had a very deep um, deep love for St. Therese of the Child Jesus. Um, and uh, so I, I I did a little bit of research because when we were asked to pick a confirmation saint, I was like, who do I pick? There's so many good ones. But I think I, I think that Therese picked me rather than me picking her. Um, you know, it was a completely divine providence that I was led to her. And um, uh, so I actually came came about came to know about the secular order through Rachel Zilmer, who was our our companion in the Catholic Woman of the Chapel. Um, I had uh, I had made a pilgrimage with my family to Lourdes. Um, because uh, Raphael, my son, had a lot of speech impediments and developmental delays. And we went on this pilgrimage with the military uh, warriors, warriors to Lords program, um, asking the intercession of Mother Mary to heal him uh, with all his developmental issues. Uh, it was a life-changing experience for my family. Um, my mother-in-law at the same time was going through a very aggressive breast cancer. Uh, she was battling a stage three breast cancer. She was also on the pilgrimage with us. And we went on this one week pilgrimage and um, we experienced tremendous amount of healings and graces in our spiritual life. Um, my mother-in-law was healed from cancer. Raphael is doing very well. He overcame his speech impediments. And when I came back, I had a lot of zeal to be, to because I have felt that I, I really needed to, to give back what I have received. So I started p- participating in um, Bible studies with the Catholic woman of the chapel. And uh, you actually were the one who asked me to teach, if you remember, and you said, you need, to, you need to be the facilitator. And you asked me to teach about the Eucharist. And we also did this Bible study on the, the scriptural basis of the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Bible and the Virgin Mary. So um, that I was learned a great a, year. You did amazing. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, it brought about many, um, many deep blessings uh, to our, our faith and our community. And Rachel, um, praise be to God, uh, Rachel was called by the Holy Spirit to invite me to uh, the, the Carmelite, the secular order Carmelite community in Georgetown. And because she was also discerning a vocation in Carmel. And she's like, you need to come visit it. And I didn't have any idea what a secular order was. So I just, I just decided to cooperate. I, I took it as an invitation from God and just decided to go visit and, and learn about it. And it was completely divine providence by the intercession of St. Therese that I was led there. So Aishu, um, you mentioned something that when you when you first visited and you went down to the community in Georgetown that you had no idea what a secular order was. No. Um, probably many people seeing this also have no idea what a secular order is. Do you want to talk a little bit about what that is and, and how, um, you know, what this this opportunity that exists for lay people? Yes, yes, absolutely. So um, to just give a little bit of a description about the, so we belong to the secular order of the discalced Carmelites. There are de- different kinds of Carmelite communities, but we are discalced. And, and we are discalced Carmelites because we are a Carmelite family that was reformed in the 16th century by St. Teresa of Avila and St. John of the Cross. Basically, at that time, there were a lot of problems in society, and um, the nuns and the friars of the Carmelite order of that time had a lot of problems. And so St. Teresa and St. John of the Cross were the reformers of the order, and the word discalced means shoeless. So, um, but we are secular, so being shoeless is, is more like, you know, exercising the, the virtue of humility. So shoeless, in, in other words, for us seculars is to really show poverty of spirit in all walks of our lives. Um, and so um, 
this is basically uh, we are we are an order that is devoted to Our Lady of Mount Carmel, and we uh, are a contemplative order. So we're unlike there are many different orders, like Benedictines, Franciscans, and but in our charism is to lead a life of contemplation. So we are called contemplatives, and we live in allegiance to Jesus Christ, and we we are constantly striving to seek His holy face, so that we can make him known to the world. Wow, thank you, Aishu. If, um, if someone else was, was interested in investigating um, the, the Third Order Discount Carmelites, what would be like their first step? The first step is to always pray because not everybody is called to, to this vocation. This is truly a vocation and it's, it's truly a calling. And it requires a, lot, a very strict spiritual discipline in your life. And we as Carmelites, secular Carmelites, we come from all different walks of life. Um, you know, even, even a, a young man as young as 18 can join the Discalc Carmelite order if he is has a calling to it. So the very first step is to continue to seek God's will for that person if he's really called to the order. And the discernment process is is could be pretty lengthy in that sense you know, because it, it involves a lot of prayer and it's it's truly a calling to the vocation. What is, um what's sort of the timetable for becoming a discount Carmelite? I'm assuming you can't do it in a month. No. Or no, not maybe not even a year. No. So the entire period of, uh, to become a secular order of discount Carmelite takes six, six years or more. Wow. So uh, it's, uh, it's as rigorous as being a priest, to be honest. And, uh, Wow. Uh, we we have to uh, really constantly um we uh, we have to constantly be in prayer and and see where God is actually leading us in this vocation, and um, one of the main uh, one of the main charisms of our order is to live the beatitudes. So uh, we we will have to uh, also live the beatitudes, and uh, we make promises to the evangelical councils of poverty, chastity, and obedience. So the period of formation can can be about six years or more. Where um where are you in your period of discernment? I am. I have just made my 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 first temporary promise to the evangelical evangelical councils. So I have been in formal for about maybe four years now, and um, I have three more years to make my final promise. Wow. Well, congratulations on making um that first that first major commitment. Thank you. It's a big step. I'd like to add a little something to that. Um, it this when we talk about six years, we're we're talking about a, a formation period, um, and Saint Teresa Avila is really known as the saint of prayer, um, and so uh, we we study the saints and we we study the saints of the order and um, the church documents on the laity. Um, and it, it it's a growth system, but a lot of people come because they're searching, they they're searching for a deeper relationship with our Lord, and um, so a lot of people are attracted to Carmel because um, it shows us the steps to get to that deeper relationship with our Lord. And, and as our Holy Mother Saint Teresa Avila, uh, we refer to her as our Holy Mother because she was the foundress of the order. Uh, I, actually, what do we say? That God founded the order, obviously. <laughs> but um, St. Teresa was his instrument. Um, is that, you know, prayer leads to works. And um, so that's one way that we, you know, is kind of a measuring stick of, are you are you understanding what prayer is, is when we start seeing, you know, your charitable works come out in you. So I, I wanted to clarify that, that it sounds really bad. Oh, six years. Wow. But but it, it's a beautiful process and you don't think too much of it. But actually, once you made your first promise, you are a member of the order. Um, it's just you are a temporary member. So I just wanted to clarify that. I hope that helped. Thank you, Barbara. Um, when I was reading through some of the material that you sent, one of the things that struck me was um, was of the, the mission, which is that it, it says here, Secular share in the Carmelite mission of knowing God so God can be known. Do you want to speak to that a little bit, I too? 
Yes, knowing God is is a, is a, obviously it's a process. You know, um, not all of us know God completely at, in this world, and that's a supernatural mystery from our understanding of our Catholic faith. And but it is the the life of being a contemplative is what we are talking about. Knowing God and to seek His holy face is that because we are people who are who are we are called contemplatives. We are seculars who are contemplatives, and in in what that really means is we we really strive to practice mental prayer every day and we meditate on the divine office every day we we strive to go to mass every day and um, you know and we imitate the blessed virgin mary from luke's gospel we know that mary pondered everything in her heart and so we imitate her in that sense of constantly pondering god's will and seeking his face in everything and just being focused on god and uh, and we also have meetings that a community life is also a very important charism for us because we for me personally my Carmelite family is my family I, I don't know what I would do without them because that once a month meeting for me is basically a reset button for my for me in my life uh, as you know I'm a homeschooling mother and life can get pretty crazy you know chasing after a toddler and trying to you know just get school work done and uh, you know for me the mental prayer and um just the um the the discipline the spiritual discipline in that Carmel has given me um has really brought in a lot of fruits in my vocation as a, a mom and a wife and also as a sister uh, sister in Carmel to all my 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 brothers and sisters in Carmel so um you know um we always um we always try to make sure that our community life is um enriched and with the meetings monthly meetings and to strive to develop that beautiful relationship with my, my community members. Um, and uh, I have been very blessed to meet some phenomenal people in my community who really um, really taught me what it means to be a contemplative through their, through their own lives. And, uh, you know, just, just to have that fellowship information and uh, that's, and then the mission is, the mission can be different for different people. Like my mission is basically to make God known through my my vocation as a homeschooling mom, so I'm involved in a couple of different apostolates. Um, uh, I teach science to the homeschooling community, uh, the Catholic schoolhouse community in Temple, and uh, I'm also involved in uh, catechesis. Um, for uh, I, I it's, we do the Little Flower Girls Club curriculum for uh, grades three to um, grades eight for the girls in uh, a in a local parish. To teach them, you know, virtue using the Little Flower Girl, Girls Club curriculum. So, uh, I'm involved in a couple of different apostolates, and also the, the biggest apostolate for me is my prayer because um, I'm I put that as a really important aspect of my spiritual life to be the praying presence for the church, my community, and pretty much everybody that God God puts in my path. So, basically, Carmel is not really for me. Carmel is basically for me to be a blessing that God is just using me as this, like, I would say a broom, you know, to, to bless, to bless, you know, everybody else and bring about, um, you know, just this, make him known. I loved, um, I loved your metaphor that, that our Lord is using you like a broom. And it is, it is very fitting as we are making, as we are having this interview on the feast day of uh, St. Martin de Porres, the, uh, the saint of the broom. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um. So, I was wondering, Aishu, you know, the the mission, the charism, um, <clears throat> the the different obligations, the uh, the apostolates that you're working with, and then, you know, having the babies underfoot, and I'm sure you're doing many of the same things that all that all mothers do: the making of the of the meals and the washing of the dishes and the the things that make up daily life. So, um, what is a what does a day in the life look like for you? When do you fit in those prayer times? When do you um, work this into all of the different things that you're doing? Yes. So my day begins basically uh, when I wake up in the morning. I I I do my mental prayer for thirty minutes. I I begin my day before my children even wake up. Uh, because that's when I have a quiet time and uh, just having that quiet time for God is a, a, a top priority for me. 
uh, because that's when I can really focus on him and and I do my mental prayer and there's many, many different ways that mental prayer can be practiced. And um, I don't have a favorite way, but uh, I'd like to do the Lexio Divina. You know, um, I, I do Lexio Divina every morning to start my day with the Gospels uh, and the daily readings of the Mass. And I usually meditate on that or I, I, I absolutely love the Imitation of Christ by Thomas Kempner. And I have many different aids and resources that I've I have I make use of for my meditation um, and I completely leave, give it to the Holy Spirit to let me decide what I want to meditate on that day um, and so I do my 30 minutes of mental prayer and then I, I um, before the kids wake up I do my morning prayer which is we pray that the divine office also called us the liturgy of the hours um, which is what the church prays so we do we I, I do that in the morning and then my children wake up and attend to their needs and I also, um, one of my primary missions is to also teach my children how to be contemplatives, even though they don't, they're, they're very little. And so I, I strive to make sure that we also have quiet time with the kids. And we, um, you know, we, our day begins with basically, we pray, we pray all the, all the prayers of the Baltimore Catechism. I make them say the Our Father, the Hail Mary and the Glory Be and all of the act of faith, hope, charity and the morning offering and we pray St. Joseph every day and, you know, then we begin our homeschool. So, and then we have, when noon hits, we, we basically go to mass together and I take my children to mass with me. And I'm usually with Therese in the cry room because she's a toddler, but my son, Raphael, sometimes alters hills during the daily mass. So um, I, I take them to mass and we come home and have lunch and the kids just finish up with their schoolwork or Therese takes a nap. So this is pretty much how the day goes. Then at 3 p.m., we I have I have particularly a calling to pray for the poor souls in purgatory. So um, I I also am part of the Holy Soul Sodality. Um, uh, to I I've had um, uh, I've, God has blessed me with the cross of infertility. So basically, um, through my mental prayer, one of the graces that I have got is to offer up my infertility for the poor souls in purgatory. So that is basically a grace that came out of being a contemplative actually. And uh, so I have a very um, deep devotion for the poor souls. And uh, uh, I uh, offer my 3 p.m. Divine Mercy Chaplet for the sick and the dying for the same reason. And um, and then in evening prayers, we do our evening prayers. I pray the Vespers every evening. And then uh, the rosary with my family. When my husband gets back from work, we eat our dinner and we say the family rosary. And then at night, I do the examination of conscience and I pray the compliant, which is also part of the liturgy that I was. So basically my my life, even though I'm a lay person, you know, I try to integrate my prayer life with my vocation as a mom. And that has brought tremendous amount of graces and blessings. I sure your day sounds very busy. I hope that you um, drink lots of coffee. Yes, I do have to survive on coffee. <laughs> yes, and I'm I'm sure it will be very comforting to know that even um e even women of Carmel are um in the cry room because um, mothers can be very hard on themselves. So all of you watching, next time you're in the cry room, just remember, Aishu's probably in the cry room too. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> yes, I mean I just wanted to emphasize that even though it may sound like I'm doing a lot, honestly, it is it is not a lot. I, I kind of see it as, I think I'm just doing the bare minimum, you know, Th this is uh, even, this is not, this is not a life that, that uh, uh, a person in a religious order should be, should be, it's just not just only for the religious, it's for everybody. And the contemplative life is for everybody to seek, everybody needs to seek the face of God. So I, I want to encourage everybody who's watching this, that it is very doable. And, uh, you know, it's the baby steps that we need to start working baby steps. And, uh, and although this may look like I'm, I'm doing a perfect job, I do have my, my bad days sometimes, especially when my child has not gotten a good night's rest or, you know, somebody gets sick in the house and, you know, and, and obviously we need to be flexible in those situations because those are just moments that God sends our way to say, hey, you need to take a break from, like, don't try to beat yourself up, like, if you don't finish your vespers today, because your, your child is sick, and, you know, that's more important right now. 
So it's it's completely conforming to God's will in every moment of your life. Wow, just that um that level of surrender. Yes. That's, um, that's something that you have to really practice minute to minute and really exactly. live in. Yes. Yeah, I want. I'm glad that Aisha said that because I I wanted to emphasize that. Uh, it, you know, it sounds rough, but it's um, it's very doable. It, it, I think it's just a matter of managing your time and realizing how before y- you you wasted so much time, um, and and the prayers. You know, like the thirty minutes a minute meditation are thirty minutes, but liturgy of the hours are fifteen minutes. You know. And uh, so, um, it, it's very. It really is very doable. And I and I'm a person who always hated. I hated commitment. It's like, you know, the commitment of going to a monthly meeting was like, oh, I don't know if I could do that. But from the very first meeting I went to, it's like, well, no, this is like being with family. So it's really, it's not what you think of a hardship commitment. It's a fun commitment. So there's things like that that you know. On the face value, you think, "Oh, I could never do that." But you'd be surprised. <laughs> and God, God just gives you that energy and grace too. To yes, but but I, I'm I'm retired now, so I shoes in a different boat. <laughs> yes, my state of life. A lot. I worked fifty hours a week and did all this, so it is. It wow. Is but I shoe with kids. You're right. You just really have to be flexible, don't you? And yes, spouse, I do. You know, you can't you can't ignore your first vocation, which is yes. for women is usually being married. Uh, you know, so yes. you can't ignore that and, and be a mother and, and a yes. wife. And one of the things that I wanted to share is that I mean, when I was discerning this vocation, I, I had a lot of temptations to think that this is very hard. And mm. in fact, and I that and I kind of think that's almost like the devil stopping me from saying you can't do it. And I actually had asked the intercession of St. Therese and I, I prayed in Novena to Therese and I clearly had the call. I, I clearly knew it was, I'm called for this. And, um, you know, so it was very clear to me that I couldn't deny it. And so I decided to persevere through those temptations. It's about perseverance. You know, we, we have to persevere through these temptations and they're very common to everybody when they're discerning a vocation, they would have temptations. But it's that we have to persevere through it and get past the other side because, you know, you can't let anything stop you. When God is asking you to do something, you, you there's, there's no way out. Like, you will know that you have to do it. Um, it that's, that's bringing to mind something else that was in some of the material that you sent over, which is um, talking about some of the foundations of the Carmelite life, which was, um, it says, arming, arming yourself with the practice of virtues mm-hmm. and um of course that that language of of arming yourself of preparing preparing yourself for battle of um you know having a good defense in place that of course you know speaks to our military community and sort of the the day-to-day you know environment in which we live and um yeah you know when you're faced with these temptations and and perseverance so what um what what virtues or practices have virtues have um have you grown in since um since beginning your journey with Carmel? Well, I have to be very honest here. I do have still a lot of growth to go. Go. I'm not. I'm not a perfect. I'm not a saint. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm just a sinner like just everybody else. But one of the things that I have wanted to share about how it has brought tremendous grace to me is that I have these tools that I've been given you know basically the practice has to we have to practice these virtues like one of the main things that we in Carmel practice is detachment detachment Mm. humility and these two are so important as St. Teresa talks about a person who's not humble cannot see God and you know we have to really really exercise the virtue of humility and detachment constantly in our day-to-day life and, you know, just striving for those virtues. And yes, we will fail because it's, it, that's, that's, that's the nature of the battle we are in. We will fail at it, but we have God's grace to help pick us up and move forward, you know? So this is something that we will have to constantly, you know, just continue to, to lead a sacramental life and to put those virtues in practice, the detachment and humility are the key ones. 
Aishu and Barbara both, um, what would be some recommendations to make to make those those steps for someone who's saying, you know, I really need to practice more humility and detachment in my life? Maybe they're not ready, or maybe they're not maybe they're not called to the vocation of Carmel, but they recognize that they need this in their life. What would be some of your um, your suggestions from your from your experience to help them grow in humility and detachment? Well, um, well, I think first thing uh, as Carmelites is is prayer, and um, you, you know the, at the basics of what prayer is, you know you have your uh, vocal prayer, which is your Our Father and Hail Mary. Uh, but um, as Carmelites, we go a little bit deeper, and, and prayer. Saint Teresa tells us prayer is nothing more than to be with the one who loves you. You know, and um, I think I think the first thing is to from your heart, uh, ask God for these things. Um, I think another very important thing that um, I think the outside world, the secular world um, in our faith is lacking uh, uh, about self-examination. And it's very good, uh, part of our order, part of our, our routine is that every night we, every night or every day, it doesn't matter, you know, everybody has their own system, but is to is to examine yourself and the actions that you had um, and and how did you respond to all this stuff that God throws in your life in a particular day? How did you respond to it? And I think that helps you to see, ah, you know, I was really judgmental, you know, in that situation. Um, and 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 it's not always bad. Sometimes you you see the good and that even surprises you because you know, you know you're incapable sometimes of good and you see it and you say, th thank you, Lord, you know, uh, Thank you, Lord, because I know that came from you. But um, so I think that's the first step to me is always prayer and ask the Lord to show you the way. Um, I, I will recommend a book if I can. Uh, it's yes, a book please. called, um, especially on humility, it's called Know, know Thyself. Um, and it, it is, um, it's a summary. It's 100 daily meditations on humility. And they're just real short. It's a small little book. I don't have it in front of me. I'm sorry to say, uh, but um, I mean, it, it takes you like maybe three minutes to read the daily thing, but it, it really hits home on how deep humility is. Um, and, and it's a great little book for self-examination. Uh, so uh, I can't tell you the name of the gentleman who wrote it, but he wrote a book a long time ago called The Humility of the Heart of Jesus. And so this book is, they took a hundred of his little key things in that book and turned it into a little meditative book. So um, it's called Know Thyself, 100 Daily Meditations on Humility. That's a great book on humility. And as far as detachment, um, you know, I think it's just, it's just that daily examination will show you maybe some things that you're attached to, um, you know, and, and I'm not talking about your love for your kids or your husband. That is part of your vocation. Um, but you'd be surprised how you're attached to, uh, as an example, uh, uh, I'm attached to the way my husband folds the tea towels. <laughs> it just really <laughs> drives me nuts. <laughs> but I have to detach from that, you know, I have to detach from that. That's just one little example of detachment, but I think examination, and I should please join in. Yes, um, I, 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 I am very familiar with the Know Thyself book, and it's a fantastic resource. And also the humility of heart, it's, I would, I would think it's the gold standard to learn about humility. It's written by, uh, I forget his name. Um, he's a Jesuit priest in the 17th century, I believe. Yeah, um, and, he, and that's what this book, uh, Know Thyself, is taking. Right. Right, right. And and I actually did a little bit of study with a friend of mine on that book, on on the humility of the original book. And it was a, it was a it was a life changing uh, to just read about what humility is, because how would you put a virtue in practice when you don't even know what it is? Right. Yeah. It, it's important to first learn about the virtues. And so you can exercise those, those virtues in your daily life. And also, one of the things that, I've, that is really um, helpful is an examination on, of conscience on your interior life. It's not, it just goes beyond the Ten Commandments. You know, like most Catholics examine their conscience based on the Ten Commandments before going to confession. 
but there is an examination of conscience based on one's interior life that you can examine that goes deeper into basically it, it has higher standards of it's not just living just by the Ten Commandments, but like really examining yourself in every aspect of your life. Um, have you seen the face of God today? You know, that's one of the questions. Have you borne wrongs patiently? You know, how have you like it, it's a very deeper examination of conscience that that kind of leads you into a lot deeper reflection of yourself and self-knowledge is one of the key um key essence of being in karma that you're constantly you're learning about yourself more and more and in the sense of how much more you need you need god's help in that in that way not like knowing like how good you are at something but you're completely dependent upon god to work in your soul and it's that conversion that we're seeking in karma to 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 become like god like being like seeking his face meaning to become like him and and that is completely god's grace it's not dependent upon us so it's that it's that what we are striving for thank you Aishu. thank you barbara yeah. thank good you good, good recommendation you're welcome I feel like I am going to have to buy a book right after <clears throat> this interview. <laughs> well, I'm with Aishu. The original book is phenomenal. Um, but but if you don't have time, and it's really not a very big book, but it just, it is so packed. It is so packed that if you're one of these highlight people, you will have the whole book highlighted. Um, and so I'm a highlight person. Really summarizes yes. it. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. And and if anybody is interested that you come across in knowing, finding out more about the secular order, um, have them give Aishu a call. So. Oh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> that was, that was going to be, that was going to be my next question. Um, so what, one, pra one practicality is that, um, for those who are in the active duty military lifestyle, we are usually moving somewhere in the range of every two to five years. So if someone was interested in beginning their journey as a um, as a third order discount or Carmelite, would that impact the, their ability to, to form in community that they would potentially uh, be moving after a period of time? There's no straightforward answer to your question, Madeline, because if it's God's will, he'll find a way for that person to be in karma. You know what I mean? So I love you, I do. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I would I wouldn't let that be a right. a factor in the discernment. And uh, in fact, that was one of the concerns I had uh, when right. I was discerning. And um, and uh, I I actually just completely put my trust in God because I. I I very well knew that if it is if it is if it if it is is his plan in be in me being normal, he will find a way to make that happen, and nothing's going nothing's going to stop that. So, I would not really put that as a because that could be completely a fear that's coming from and saying no, oh I'm not I can't do this, and it's too hard with the military life and how am I going to get the support? And those were the questions that I had as well. And to be honest with you, God has always helped me to find the support that I could make it in my monthly meetings. And I'm I'm not the type who like to miss meetings. So I actually feel bad not going to the meetings. Because like if I have yeah. to miss it for some sickness or whatever, and I'm like, that's where I have to practice detachment. I'm like, okay, I can't mm. do this day because my right. child is sick, but I I am I'm allowed three absences. And it was it's only an emergency that I actually usually take off from Carmel, but most of the times I it's my reset button and I can I, I just love being there with my, my with my family they are my family and I love seeing my 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 brothers and sisters there and you know it it's it's just brought me a tremendous amount of joy being a melancholic is pretty pretty hard so this is this is this kind of makes me to be a better better melancholic <laughs> a better melancholic <laughs> <laughs> that's good that's good all right you know, so we, oh, go we ahead. really do have lots of um, uh, lots of. We always say to be caramel, you need to be flexible. 
and and I think communities are flexible. And our province is uh, there's three provinces in the United States, and we're and we have we are going to a everybody will have the same formation. So when you have to you transfer from one province to another, you know uh, we work really hard to find you a community, and the formation's the same. So hopefully in the future you don't lose out on any formation uh, because it'll all be the same throughout the United States. So wow. Uh, and uh, and I I'm from Oklahoma City and we've had uh, a member that was in the military, and and it's thank God for um, technology because it's worked. You know when he was sent to Iran, we were able to work with him, and uh, he continued to stay a part of our community. So uh, even overseas deployment, uh, there's Carmelites all over the world. <laughs> right, I shoot. What? Yeah. What a yes. what a blessing. Lift it, lifting our world blessing. in prayer constantly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. All right. Well, for those who are who may be watching this, whether you are a at home homeschooling military wife, or maybe you are a captain or a major or a, you know specialist out some out out there somewhere, um, if you feel the call, God will make a way. And we have we have Aishu and Barb who uh, who have both uh, walked that walk and kind of understand the flexibility of, of that lifestyle and the needs. So um, we will continue to pray for for people to answer the call to, to vocation always. Thank you, Madeline. We'll keep you and your apostolate in our prayers. And yes. absolutely, we will be praying for an increase in vocation to the secular order of Christ's Carmelites. Yes. Yeah. And absolutely. help the military. Yes. Yeah. Um, thank you for letting me be here today. Barb, it was it was a pleasure. I um I I truly loved getting to know both of you so well. Um okay, so I have a I have a little blurb that I say because we're gonna put this on YouTube. So um MCCW is the official women's ministry of the Archdiocese for the Military Services. We connect, unite, and inspire US military affiliated women around the world to grow in their Catholic faith. If you'd like to support this mission financially, because we're all volunteers, our whole board is a uh, is, is a volunteer organization, and um, so it does cost money to you know still do things. We can donate our time, but we still need things. Um, so you can do so by you know looking at the links in the description below. You there's links to the website and the social media and all that. Um, so please continue to pray for vocation. Um, Aishu, would you like to close our um, our time together in prayer? Yes, let's say the Our Father. How about that? Yes. Perfect. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yes. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Madeline.